staying at the same hotel to investigate further. They find out that the old lady died the same night, but that no one knows anything of her visitor. But someone knows they're making inquiries, because on the way home, they're nearly run over. And later, a rock mysteriously falls from the cliff top as Emily walks below. then. What's the matter with you? You look terrible. Somebody just tried to kill me. What? With a rock. I was walking along the cliff path and this rock just out of the blue, I don't think it's missed me. Well, could have been an accident. I mean, rocks do fall down cliffs now and then. Oh, it wasn't. I climbed up to the top of that cliff and found the place where the rock had been levered up. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. You can see the marks. It wasn't an accident. I don't get it. I mean, why try to kill me? I mean, what have I done? It's what you saw at the hospital. Or what he's afraid you saw. Something to do with old Mrs. Me, and it must be. You must be pretty scared if he tried to kill you. But I didn't see anything. And I'm not interested in his horrible affairs. I think we ought to speak to your father. What do you think? He's not here. We went back till Friday. I've told him a bit, though. I thought I'd better. What did you tell him? Well, about how you saw the man by old Mrs. Meehan's bed just before she died. And how you saw the same man at the concert we went to, organised by the dedicated few. And what did he say to that? Well, he said a bash on the head would make you an unreliable witness. And the nurses are very careful about who they let into hospitals. Then he went on about doctors doing post-mortems and that sort of thing. So I said about the painters and the ladder. What did he say about that? He said, keep trying. England needs boys like you in the force. You know who went for dinner at the Naval College? You made me think of old Mrs. Mir. There's loads of silver in this huge glass cabinet. Not like an exhibition, bristling with burglar alarms. Quite a responsibility for her cleaning that lot. Do you think that's what he wanted? The silver? Oh, how do you get it off the premises? It's all candelabras and that sort of stuff. No, I don't think so. If that man you saw is a member of the dedicated few, he's not after silver. He's after something a lot more valuable than that. You know when you found where they dug out the rock? Were there any clues? You know, like footprints, strands of cloth, cigarette ends? I didn't notice anything. I think I'll go up there, see what I can find. Do you want me to come with you and show you where it is? No, no, no. You stay here. Stick with the others and don't go out on your own. Well, if you're sure.
Well, I probably won't find anything, but it's worth a try. Charles, that pet food van, you know, the one that nearly ran us down. Do you think, well, do you think it was deliberate? If it was, whoever's responsible seems to have a gift for arranging accidental deaths. You will watch it, won't you? Don't worry. My turn, I think. It's a big day for drum in Ferris tomorrow as the town prepares for the annual carnival when the parade of colourful floats will wind its way through the streets of the old town. And the flags are also going up at the Naval College for a visit by the President of Anabanda and his ministers are coming here to see for themselves the fine traditions of British naval training. All a part of the multi-million pound deal in which Britain provides its newly founded state with the latest in sophisticated naval defence equipment, including the training of personnel. So, if all goes well, there'll be some new faces at the college later on this year. The President will be the guest of the Naval College at a luncheon before the conference at which final documents are signed. The news of the impending orders for ships for the unabandoned Navy has been welcomed on Tyneside with the prospect of thousands of jobs for up to three years, and with it, the revitalizing What's of one of love? our most important industries. Oh, I don't know. In a period of you high employment, garden. this contract is... Oh, I'll come with you. Stretch my legs a bit. ...by election pending in marginal conditions. a good thriller in my room to go out and get it and have a read if you like. I don't want to read a thriller. Hmm. You could try for a bar. Yeah, I might. I haven't had one since I came. You'd have to raise Mrs. Coles. tonight? Oh, no. Adam laid the tables for me. I forgot to tell him that Mr. Denman would be away until Friday. I expect Charles is with him. Well, are you sure? Well, where else would he be? Well, it's just that well, it's getting late. I think I'll lock up. It's not much of a night and everyone's in now. Well, what about Charles? Oh, he'll hardly come in now. If he does, he can always ring the bell. Anyway, I seem to remember he's having dinner at the Naval College with his father. Oh, no, that was last night. Oh, I expect that's where he is, all the same. Oh, shouldn't we just check with Mr. Denman? Oh, no, dear. I'm sure there's no need to make a fuss. Charles can take care of himself. Oh, Adam. 
Your friend Charles is strong. He asked me to tell you he's with his dad. He seemed to think you might be worried. You've spoken to him? Yeah. Did he say where he was? I didn't ask. Not specifically. Well, is he coming back tonight? He didn't say. It's a bit late now, isn't it? First thing tomorrow, I'd say. But he was okay. Well, he sounded all right. Yeah. Said he was fine. Oh, there you are. Oh, you look washed out. You should be in bed. Right then. Well, good night, love. Sleep well.
Hello. Hello. Look, I'm sorry to bother you, but do you think it'd be all right to use your phone? Well, it's pretty important. We aren't on the phone, I'm afraid. There's a call box just across the road. Yes, I know. Well, the thing is, I haven't got any money. I think I could lend you two pence. Wait here a minute. There you are. I haven't anything smaller. Oh, thanks a lot. It's very nice of you. I'll pay you back. Charles Denman is back yet? Yeah, I think so. Oh, well, can I have a word with him, please? Hold on. Hello? Hello, Charles, this is Emily. Are you okay? I'm fine. Now, listen, listen, I can't tell you on the phone, but I think I found out something terribly important, and I've got to meet you. Look, can I meet you in the post office? Post office? What post office? Oh, you know, the one in Drummondcombe. Well, as soon as you can make it. Oh, no, would you give my mother a message? Good morning, Mrs. Drummondcombe Farm. Hello, Mrs. Meehan. Oh, it's Emily. Can I speak to my mother, please? Oh, yes, dear, of course. One moment, I'll get her. For goodness sake, what happened to you? Look, look, I'm all right. I'm in Drummondcombe. What do you mean you're in Drummondcombe? What on earth are you doing there? Have you been there all night? No, of course I haven't been all night. Got here about an hour ago. Is Charles with you? What do you mean? Sometimes I knew being with Charles, just what I'd like to know. But Charles... You should have been 
that dreadful Mrs. Cole this morning. Well, neither of you came down to breakfast. But Charles is with you. He must be. Look, I've just spoken to him. No, darling, you must be mistaken. He's not here. We haven't seen him. 